Some would say that this is just a boring, regular tree, no different from any others. But that's wrong, they are all very different, and all have some very interesting and unique facts. I'm Marcus, and today I will talk about pine trees. Pinus sylvestris, also called Scotch pine or the Baltic pine. It is a species of the genus Pinus, which contains a total of 115 different species. Pinus is a part of the subfamily called Pinadea, which is a part of the bigger family called Pinacea. It is a bit confusing, but it looks like this. Pinacea is a big family that for example contain both the pine tree and the spruce tree. Pinodea is a smaller subfamily that only contains the genus Pinus, called genera in plural. Pinus is the genus that is the first part of the actual name of the tree. Pinus sylvestris is the Baltic pine that we will learn about in this video. There are of course a lot of families and other groups above Pinacea as well. The whole system is quite complex, to be honest, and I'm thinking about making a more general video in the future that goes more in depth with the scientific classifications. But for now, let's focus on the Baltic pine. This particular pine is located in the northern part of Europe and in some parts of northern Asia. The Baltic pine is in Sweden the second most common tree. The European spruce tree takes the first place. The pine can be found in forests containing only pines or in mixed forests with European spruce and other hardwood species. The Baltic pine prefers poorer and sandy soils. On more fertile sites, the pine is outcompeted by other tree species, especially by the spruce here in Sweden. Let's talk numbers. A mature tree grows up to 35 meters in height and 1 meter in diameter. If the wood is used as lumber, the tree will probably only become 50 to 120 years old until it is being chopped down. In the northern parts of Europe it takes closer to 120 years, sometimes even longer. But if the tree lives in a protected area it can become much older, taller and thicker. The tallest Pinus sylvestris is located in Estonia and that tree is 46.6 meters high and it is according to the scientists at least 218 years old. The tree was actually found by mistake. At first the plan was to measure the surrounding spruce trees and then the scientists noted the impressive pine trees nearby. Here in the nature reserve in Uppsala is one of the biggest pines in Sweden. It is around 350 years old and still growing. It is around 30 meters high and has a diameter of approximately 1.42 meters and it is 4.47 meters around the tree. This tree might not beat any records in height or diameter, but it is one of the biggest pines in Sweden when it comes to total volume. It shares the first place with a tree called Ullebo Tallen, which is located in Skara Stift. Here you can see on the map. They are both around 21 cubic meters in volume to be exact. Ullebo Tallen is around 25 meters high, but as you can understand, it is thicker than the pine here in Uppsala. Let's talk about some interesting facts. Here you can see a burl, these weird things here. Sometimes the grain in the wood can grow in a deformed manner. This results in a burl. This is not unique to the pine trees, but they are always interesting since they can vary in shape and size. The burls are often a result of some kind of stress, such as an injury or a viral fungal infection. They are often found underground, attached to the roots, but as you can see, they also appear over ground. Other than looking interesting, they also serve a purpose, woodworking. The burl is expensive, which also has led to pouching in some areas in the world, where people would carve out the burl from the tree and transport it away and sell it. This is a very interesting topic and there are a lot of facts here, so this might be a separate video in the future, since this is not specific to the Pinus sylvestris. 
Believe it or not, but the Baltic pine also serves a purpose when it comes to food. You can eat the young juvenile leaves. You can eat the roots of small pine trees if they are less than 50 cm high. And you can also eat the small green cones. All of these you can eat fresh or you can cook them and eat them afterwards. This information is only for the Baltic pine, often found in Sweden. I do not know for sure how it is when it comes to other pine trees, but this is good to know as it can serve as a survival food in a critical situation. Even though I have tried to make this video as accurate as, as it can get, I would advise you to do your own research before you start eating from this tree or any other tree for that matter. The tree can also be used as medicine. For example, the sap, the bark and the needles can all be used as medicine in different ways. Let's talk about the root system. The pine tree has a so-called taproot. It means that there is one main root that grows straight down. When the taproot is fully evolved, the pine tree will stand very stable. And this is the reason why you often see trees that have been broken off closer to the ground after a big storm. Because the root system is often strong enough to stay in the ground. The spruces are different. They are using the fibrous root system. This means that they have a lot of small roots of similar sizes. This leads to that in a big storm, the whole root system of spruces tips over and can often be seen over ground together with the tip tree. And that's all for this video. Thanks for watching. And if you found this interesting, please consider subscribing since I will make more similar videos with my own recorded footage in the future. The plan is to make one or two videos each week. Thank you.